Hello, hello, I am Jessica Butts. Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast, where I help you learn to be unapologetically who you are and live your life from the front seat through personal development, self-awareness, and real and raw conversations about life, love, and business. I'm a former psychotherapist and couples counselor turned author, speaker, coach, and lovingly, well, I hope so anyway, been nicknamed Jessica Kickbutts because I believe sometimes we need hand-holding and sometimes we just need to be told the freaking truth, even if it hurts a little. So each week I'll be sharing truth bombs, life lessons, powerful interviews, and intuitive insights to empower you to get up, show up, and live your life in a new, powerful, authentic way. So if you're ready to climb into your front seat and embark on a journey of total transformation, you have come to the right place. Start your engines. Let's do this. Lifers, it is Jessica, and I am thrilled as always to be with you. Uh, and as promised, the last couple of episodes, we are going down a journey of debunking some myths, but I'm going to do it, of course, in Jessica style. So, today's topic and today's episode is debunking the myths of introversion and extroversion. There's a lot of them, but I picked kind of my favorites. Um, And then the subtitle of this is introverts are selfish AF and extroverts are idiots. So, all right. So I want to start with some general uh, myths and then we'll get into specific introverted myths and some extroverted myths. But the general uh, overarching myths about introversion and extroversion is that, first of all, we are one or the other. And this is one of the only dichotomies that is actually balanced. So sensing and intuition, don't do stuff you suck at. Thinking, feeling, don't do stuff you suck at. Judging and perceiving, we have to work on it. It's never going to be balanced, but we have to work on it. Introversion and extroversion lives both of them in our front seat, which makes up 80% of who we are. So oftentimes this is where people think, oh my God, I'm just introverted and there's no extroverted part of them. That is not true. Or extroverts think, well, you know, it's weird. I wonder why I want to spend time by myself. It's not weird. It's not weird. It's just your front seat. And I've talked about this ad nauseum, so I don't want to waste your guys' time who actually listen to my podcast each week, but there is no such thing technically as an ambivert. We're all kind of ambiverts because we all have a front seat and everybody's front seat is half half introverted and half extroverted. For example, I am an ENFJ. My driver of my car is extroverted feeling, which means I am showing the world my extroverted self. It is what the world sees of me and what it is what I give the world. And so extroverts give their best selves to other people. My co-pilot is introverted. And that is introverted intuition. So in my head, by myself, I like to create ideas. This is why I joke a lot that I'm not much of a collaborator, or if I'm being honest, not really a collaborator at all, maybe 10% with Stephanie only, um, is because I do most of my best thinking because my front seat is introverted. Our front seats are both things. One is introverted and one is extroverted. So again, this whole ambivert thing, I don't, you know, I've been saying ambivert is bullshit, but maybe it's just an explanation of why we're ambiverted. We're both things. Uh, we just have a preference for one over the other, but again, they both live in the front seat. So that's the first myth is that we are one or the other. 
Okay, so there's the general overarching of kind of the introversion and extroversion myth. I mean, there's obviously so much to talk about, but today we're specifically talking about the myths. Is So the biggest myth of all of it is that we are one or the other. We are not just one or the other. Again, introversion and extroversion makes up our front seat, which is 80% of our energy. And oftentimes that is a 50-50 split. Meaning again, as an ENFJ, uh, half of the time, maybe a little more, maybe 60-40. I mean, again, it's, you know, as long as it's in your front seat, it's okay. But kind of overarching, it's probably half, it's 50-50, where I'm out in the world giving to others, and then I need that time to go back into myself, retreat, and be thinking about things. That is different than my baby in the back seat. That is different than being pushed into the back. So that's the first myth. Again, I, you know, I love this topic so much. All I could, I could just never, ever stop talking about it. And I could have a continuous podcast. How crazy would that be, right? Like a live podcast that just never ends. God. <laughs> I'm out of my mind. I'm out of my mind. Okay. Let's get into the myths about introversion and extroversion. So uh, Stephanie, my former director of operations and now my content manager, she actually had this really great idea. And I had to marinate on it for a little bit about, do I have energy around myths and debunking the myths? Because there's so much to talk about, about personality type. I mean, I think this is episode 60 or 61. And, you know, I've got years and years of content still to go. There's so much to talk about. But when I start applying it to my own life so that you guys can have a examples and I'm not just talking at you, but I feel like we're having more of a conversation and you can see it applied in, you know, my life or somebody else's life, then it gets a little more fun. So while I've been marinating on the whole debunking of the myths, a situation came up in my own life that I want to share with you. And I'm going to just call this friend Maggie, I decided, because this is a very dear friend of mine, but I don't necessarily want to say who it is. (laughs) <laughs> even though she'll know who it is, uh, just out of respect for her. And I don't have any friends named Maggie. So her name is Maggie today. Maggie is very introverted. And I, as most of you know, am very extroverted. And this first myth is around the title of, of this episode, which is introverts are selfish AF and extroverts are idiots. So let me elaborate a little further before I debunk it. Introverts, this is the this is part of the education, is that they save their best selves for themselves, which to extroverts comes off very selfish. Why aren't you getting back to me? Why aren't you responding to me right away? Why aren't you responding to my Marco Polos? Like we have a group Marco Polo and she just ghosts for like four days because that's her priority is herself, her husband and her family as it technically should be. But as an extrovert, I give my best self to the world, which I actually know this because she's told me this before and not such harsh language, but she's basically said like, you're kind of an idiot. You're an idiot for giving so much to your clients, giving so much to social media, giving so much to all of your friends, right? So introverts have a depth of friends and a depth of interest, meaning they only have a few friends even a couple sometimes, but they're very, very close to them and they just have a few interests. So extroverts typically have a whole bunch of friends and a whole bunch of interests because they give their best selves to other people, which to introverts, that can seem really idiotic. I mean, as an extrovert, I kind of agree at times. However, I'm trying to debunk that myth. And the debunking of that is that extroverts get energy from doing that. Introverts do not. So while that is to them, we look like idiots for giving away our best selves. In reality, it's a myth because we get something out of it. 
we get energy, we we fulfill that part of ourselves that is very much needing that connection. So introverts, on the other hand, our myth about them is that they're selfish because we are wondering, where are you? Why aren't you getting back to us? Why aren't you connecting? Why aren't you doing the thing? So while the first myth was they're balanced, we still always have a preference. And introverts prefer to be alone or to be with very few people that they trust very much, those that they allow into their lives. They do not and will not open up to people that they do not deem appropriate or or worthy, really, a worthy. I've got a lot of introverted friends and many of, I've been friends with them for a very, very long time. Uh, and one of them just recently, she broke down. We, you know, we're on Marco Polo and she she broke down. This is somebody different than Maggie. Um, and she broke down and later she came back and was like, you know, wow, I must have been really like on edge for me to get that uh, vulnerable with you. And my, I was actually a little offended because I thought, my God, I'm vulnerable with you like every day. Like every time we talk, I'm vulnerable, but that's extroverts is that it, that that's what we want to do. We want to connect. We want to open. We want to open the floodgates. We want to talk about emotions. We want to go there as feelers. Not, this is not true for thinkers. So let me be clear about that. Extroverted feelers in particular, like that's what we want. But for introverts, that takes a little bit more for them. You know, even as a very dear friend to this person, that it, that is going to another level for them because they hold that so close. So that's basically the first myth that I wanted to kind of debunk is that extroverts are idiots. You know, we're not, most of us anyway. (laughs) It's just, we like to give ourselves to other people because we get energy from it. It fills us up. There is a purpose to what you would perceive potentially, you introverts would perceive as being idiots or codependent or needy or whatever. It is a myth because we're actually getting something out of it. And so the other side of the coin with the introverts is that obviously introverts are not selfish. I mean, again, not all of them, like everybody can be selfish, not just introverts, but extroverts too, is that they're not selfish. It's just that's how they also get their energy. They recharge their energy by being alone. That is how that they, again, that has how they get energy. So it's not selfish. And that's why we need to understand each other, right? Because I could, if I didn't know my friend as well as I do, I would be like, what the fuck? Where are you? What, what are you? I would make up stories. You're mad at me. You're pissed. You're irritated. You're a bitch. You're, you're, you know, hiding. You've got better things to do, like all the stories, right? But instead, I just go, I know what she's doing. She's totally recharging. She is doing what she needs to do for her introverted self. And lovingly, I'm probably way too much for some of my clients or my friends or clients for that matter, because I need a lot. I give a lot. I want to engage a lot. I want to respond a lot. I want to Marco Polo a lot. I mean, my introverted friends and my partner is on the edge, on the edge of introversion and extroversion, slight introvert. But, you know, he has few, very, very close friends. And he watches how many people I Marco Polo. And he's like, I have no idea how you do that. I mean, he's just like, it's unbelievable to me. But I'm like, I get something out of it. I get a lot of energy from that. And, you know, just to go down that rabbit hole, when we first started dating, that was very hard energy for me to read. And if I didn't understand that he was an introvert, I could have taken that as he wasn't interested in me he's selfish, he's whatever, off doing something else, when reality is he just needs time to recharge. I mean, he's also a musician, so he's playing music, he's doing all kinds of things. And so this is the importance of understanding ourselves first and then not making that idiotic assumption that everyone does, that everyone is like us. All right, Frenzy Lifers, this is your chance. This is your chance. All of my content for the past 10 years as a psychotherapist, a couples counselor, a coach, 
all the Myers-Briggs stuff, all of the Front Seat Life methodology is beautifully packaged up in a course that I am going to walk you through live and it is coming up April 7th. We have a wait list and it has four awesome freebies for you to keep you company until April 7th. The course is only open April 7th through the 21st, 2020. That is it, two weeks only. So we started a wait list where you have some video content. We're giving you some access to my journal that I've never given before, a fast pass into the squad, all kinds of other content to help keep you engaged until we open up. The website is jessicabutts.com forward slash L-U. The course is beautifully called Live Unapologetically, a revolutionary new approach to your personality type and having a kick butt life. Again, jessicabutts.com forward slash L-U for simplicity purposes. And I cannot wait to go on this journey with you. It's going to be 90 days of intense focus for people who are trying to figure out who they are, what they are designed to do in this world. If you are one of those people that keep asking, what am I supposed to be doing? What career should I be doing? Where, how can I be helping people? This is the course for you. What are you innately good at? You know, all those things that people are talking about all the time of like figuring out your zone of genius and, and figuring out your message and figuring out your gifts. This is how you figure it out through Myers-Briggs and my revolutionary approach. I will show you what you suck at and what you need to be avoiding. What stress does to you and where it puts you. I will teach you how to speak your partner's language as they are likely the opposite type to you. This will absolutely help you understand your children better. It's tangible tools on how to get things done for your personality type. And then last but not least, truly for the first time in your life, probably ever living unapologetically who you are. This is your chance. It's not going to be open again for at least another six months. So I cannot wait to see you in there and start working with you. Last chance, jessicabutts.com forward slash L U. Like most of my very best friends and my partner, for that matter, are introverted. And so if I think their energy is like me and why aren't you texting me all the time and where are you 24-7 and why don't you do this and why don't you do that? That's how I am. That is not how they are. So how do we come to a compromise? And my partner and I, for that, I so didn't mean to talk about this, but I think it's a great example is that we've had to learn how to compromise because I don't only want to do it his way because then I don't get my needs met and I can't expect him to communicate as much as I do because that is also not comfortable for him. So he and I over the last you know year and a half have really had to have lovely and kind communications from our front seats, not in our back seats when we get irritated and, you know, hurt, but from our front seats of a place of like, okay, you know, I know that you're this way and I need more communication or I need a little more time by myself or whatever it is. And communicating our needs, not labeling each other, not pathologizing each other, again, not debunking these myths. And the myth would be you're not interested you don't think about me, you don't whatever. When nothing could be further from the truth, we just have different energies. So this example with my fake friend, Maggie, I almost forgot her fake name, <laughs> Maggie, and my partner right now. Like these are very poignant examples. And again, I like sharing things with you guys when there are some examples that I can, so that you can see yourself in them. Again, I mean, really, this has nothing to do with me. This is about you guys being able to see yourself through stories and examples versus me just talking at you. So I hope to God that this is helpful. I mean, this is totally why I do this. This is, <laughs> this is, a lot of work. So I, again, this is for you guys. So I hope that that was helpful. Okay. Let's talk about some more myths. Another extroverted myth is that extroverts never want or need 
to be alone. And I think I've covered this, but that is definitely, we need to debunk that myth because we are not just one or the other. I absolutely, as an extrovert, have a preference for being around other people. However, that is not all of my front seat. The other half is introverted. So that that's crazy. And oftentimes I hear people think, wow, they can't be extroverted if they also have a need and a desire to be alone. And so that's why, you know, Stephanie and I really wanted to bring you these episodes uh, of debunking these myths because I think people get confused. They, 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 uh, struggle with really understanding their full type because they think these myths exist. And again, we are both types. So uh, well, let's just get rid of that myth. Let's debunk that myth that extroverts um, don't want to be by themselves. That's absolutely crazy. Okay. We've got a couple more introverted myths. So, the next introverted myth, I have two more, um, is that they are shy or quiet with everyone. <laughs> and if you are either best friends with or are married to an introvert, you know that this is absolutely a myth because introverts they just don't like a lot of people. They don't like the crowds. They don't like all of, you know, big parties and big groups and, and things like that. They like to be close-knit one-on-one. So Maggie is another good example of this. She's one of my best introverted friends. And Maggie and I, one-on-one, that girl never stops talking. I mean, she talks just as much, if not more, sometimes she would probably disagree, but than I do when it's just her and I. When we get together in a group, she sometimes will say five words the entire night because the energy for her is totally different. Maggie and I, when we're together, if I didn't already know she was an introvert, I would never in a million years guess that Maggie is an introvert because she's talkative and hi, how are you? And what's going on? I mean, she, you would never know. And that is one of the myths is that introverts, that they think that they're shy or quiet with everyone. And that is not true. They love to, they still love to talk and share and engage just in a very small group or one-on-one. And again, most of their best friends, most of their spouses would say that there's no way that that person is introverted because they're so communicative and talkative and and engaging when they're with just one-on-one. So that's another myth. Next myth is that they don't like to be around people. I mean, that's, that is not true. Again, it's in a smaller group, but here's where this one is a little bit different than the last one I mentioned is this, this myth is more about intimate conversation versus big group conversations. So introverts, they of course like to be around people, but they prefer it again, one-on-one with deeper conversations versus general superficial conversations. This is actually also true for intuitives. So introverted sensors, this isn't as irritating to them. They don't mind having the small talk, but introverts in particular in a large group, like if they go to a dinner party and people are talking about the weather, (laughs) They are just going to like shut down to no end. Like they just have zero interest whatsoever. An extrovert can probably like still have a little bit of fun with that conversation and be a little bit entertained because they are just engaged and they're talking and sharing and open and engaged, all of those kinds of things. So that is another myth is that they're shy with everyone and that they don't like to be around people. Uh, Again, they just like to be around fewer people and have deeper kinds of conversations. So uh, I could probably come up with a hundred different myths, but those ones felt very, very powerful and poignant, specifically the ones around that introverts, again, are selfish AF, (laughs) 
<laughs> which they're not. It's just how they recharge their energy and that extroverts uh, are idiots for giving away their best selves to other people because again, that's also how we get our energy. Today's type tip is about sensors and intuitives. So sensors, S's, the ones who take in information via their five senses, they thrive in structure and sameness. They love the nine to five. They love the schedules. They love day-to-day routine. It is just who they are. And intuitives need, not want, need variety and change in their life. Not necessarily spontaneity because that is more of a J and P quality, but again, ends need variety in almost everything they do on almost a weekly basis. So one night a week, they have a variety of things that they go do or they have a, a vacation coming up. There's something in their weekly schedule that allows for some variety and some differentiation from the rest of what intuitives would consider monotony of daily life. So my friends, I hope that this was a helpful episode to you. I am going crazy about type over on my personal Facebook page, my business Facebook page. Hey, go feel free to like, you know, friend me on Facebook. I may or may not accept it. I'll I'll be honest. Uh, But my business Facebook page is wide open. I am going crazy on my Insta stories on my Instagram page, which that is totally open as well. So I should probably just say that. Maybe not friend me, but go to my business page. Go to Front Seat Life on Instagram. I am sharing a type tip every single day in March up until April. And then I'm going on a very extended vacation uh, to Greece. So you're getting a bunch of good stuff from me right now. So go check out my page. I'm sharing all the things. I did a Facebook Live today um, about this topic, and it's just so much fun to be able to share all of this with you. So I love seeing your DMs on Instagram. I love, 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 love your reviews over on iTunes. I so appreciate it. Uh, And I will see you guys next week when I am going to debunk the myths of sensing and intuition, which is going to be a freaking doozy. I'm going to give you a teaser. One of the biggest myths is that sensors don't have intuition. I have heard that from the day that I started using type 20 some years ago. And I cannot wait to share that with you next week. So if you're a sensor and you think you don't have intuition, stay tuned for that. And then there's all kinds of of good intuitive ones, of course. So I am Jessica Butts. I am your intuitive coach. I love, 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 love sharing this stuff with you. And I will see you next week. the bottom of my heart. Truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options and the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or or strategy days, or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. 